Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of Room 2003 Science Video. In this video we are going to be introducing the assignment for environmental science titled Predicting Weather from Barometric Pressure Data. The intent of this assignment is really fourfold. First is simply to help us get outside. Second is to give us an opportunity to practice our science observation skills. Third, to give us the opportunity to practice our science thinking skills. And perhaps most important, fourth is simply to enjoy doing environmental science. Now, as you'll recall, before we left school for the COVID-19 shutdown, we had planned to hone our weather predicting skills by collect collecting real-time data on the campus. Well, in light of COVID-19, and the sensible, sensible precautions that we need to take relative to it, we are instead going to practice social distancing weather prediction. So we're, we are going to work on our weather prediction skills, but we're going to do it in a way that helps protect, best protect all of us in this COVID-19 shutdown time. So what is the overall objective then? When you are finished, you will be able to make general weather predictions based upon barometric pressure data. And the rest of this video describes what that means in more detail. First, what general weather predictions exactly are we talking about? And we're going to work with three. They are temperature, cloud cover, and precipitation. Now in terms of temperature, you can either read that at home if you have a thermometer at home. You can read that from that thermometer. Or uh, most cellular devices, electronic devices, uh, have an app that will give you weather conditions. Or you can simply get on Google and Google weather conditions for Cambridge or Zanesville or the, or the nearest location. And since we are uh, away from school, and since most weather stations report in degrees Fahrenheit, uh, we can go ahead and use degrees Fahrenheit for this. You know, being uh, if we were in the classroom, we would tend toward degrees Celsius, but degrees Fahrenheit is okay. What about cloud cover? Well, with cloud cover, we could get into a lot of detail because clouds come in a variety of shapes, and the shapes all tell us something about weather, but we're going to keep it to Descriptions like sunny, which essentially means very, very little, if any, cloud cover, to cloudy, somewhat cloudy. And here we see uh, this condition, a lot of sky, but definitely some clouds. And then we'll use the term overcast, where there's overcast means there's a blanket of clouds between us and the sun. And then uh, be mindful of any really unique features you see about the clouds um, that stand out at you. You know, if you see this really tall, gray, mean-looking cloud coming uh, at the time of your observation, then uh, feel free to note that. But in general, keep the cloud cover simple. Uh, keep it to sunny, partly cloudy, and then cloudy. And if you have the opportunity to describe special features of the cloud, uh, cloud cover, feel free to do that. And then the third one is precipitation. Now, in terms of precipitation, hopefully uh, you and I will be dealing mostly with rain, and I'd like to see a little bit less of that right now, but we might get into some snow yet. It is still uh, fairly early in April, and given this time that we're in kind of between warm and cold conditions, we might even see some sleet or some hail. Um, I don't know how hail likely is, uh, how likely hail is at this point, but uh, I could definitely see rain, snow, and uh, even a little bit of sleet or freezing rain. So precipitation, just describe what you see when you're out there. So temperature, cloud cover, precipitation. What is the overall process then as we think about details for making this happen? Well, first is you need to set up your weather observation sheet and we will have we have an example of that in another slide or two 
Second, you will collect two weather observations per day for seven days and try to space them at least eight hours apart. Uh, that way you do get, if there is a variation in weather conditions, hopefully uh, that eight plus hour spacing will catch that. Third, you're going to get a barometric pressure graph from me next week. So I'll be collecting the barometric pressure data and graphing that uh, as part of our project. Fourth, this is the thinking step. Part of the thinking step is compare your observations to the barometric pressure graph. And then fifth, develop some general forecasting rules from the comparison. Now you and I know well that in terms of rules, that may not be the best word to use when it comes to weather forecasting because it seems like there's as many exceptions as rules. Um, but what you want to do is look at your observations of temperature, cloud cover, precipitation, compare them to the barometric pressure for uh, the matching days and times and develop some general rules about those three things. So that's the, that's the detailed process for this assignment. So let's set up your weather observation sheet. Again, uh, our guideline here is keep it simple. You will need a date, and uh, today should be your first reading date. You'll need a time. And obviously, uh, these are a little bit made up here. And then you will need to go outside, and um, if you have your outside thermometer, check the temperature. Or again, if you use your device or computer, check your temperature that way. Uh, but then also uh, get outside to look at the clouds. What do they look like? Uh, is it mostly sunny? What do you see up in the sky? And what's happening precipitation-wise? And then you're going to, 8 to 12-ish hours later, uh, you're going to do another set of observations. Date, time, temperature, cloud cover, and precipitation. And I'm hopeful, I hope I'm just kidding about the light snow. But your weather observation sheet will be set up something like this. So I will be collecting the barometric pressure data several times a day and will prepare a graph to share with you next Thursday morning. Um, and this should say uh, seven days worth of barometric pressure data because I'm, I'm going to be collecting right along with you. So it's really seven days worth of barometric pressure data. And when you get the data, I'll have the, the axes set up uh, with the barometric pressure units over here and uh, dates and hours specified along the bottom so that you can use that to compare to. So this is what I will be doing um, as well as collecting my own uh, general weather observations um, while you are doing yours. So the BP data and graph are my responsibility. So then next week, what will happen is I will send you the barometric pressure data graph. I'll post it to Google Classroom or email it. And you are going to have your observations and the barometric data graph, barometric pressure data graph, and you're going to compare them. And you're going to think about um, what patterns do you see in regards to temperature? As barometric pressure changes, what happens to temperature? Does it follow along in some way? It may be directly related. It may be inversely related. It may not seem to depend a whole lot on barometric pressure. But what do you see? Compare them and think. Uh, what about cloud cover? Same sort of process. Is cloud cover related to barometric pressure somehow? Uh, if barometric pressure goes up, what does cloud cover do? If it goes down, what does cloud cover do? And same with our precipitation. Now, just bear in mind that precipitation is going to be obviously related to temperature as well. So uh, it's not a very 
this doesn't make for a very good scientific experiment because of the number of variables that may be changing but we're looking for overall patterns here so grading wise how am I going to look at that uh, well one of the things that you will do is submit your daily observations and forecasting rules electronically and what I mean by that is maybe you take a picture of them with your device and email that to me uh, or if it's something that you type up you can email me that or share that with me across Google Drive but um, somehow you'll send that to me electronically and then I will grade that based upon uh, frequency in other words did you do the two observations four day for per day for seven days I will grade it on completeness did you for each of your observations did you do temperature cloud cover and precipitation and I will grade that for clarity of communication um, in other words can I read it if it's handwritten and do I understand what you have written does it make does what you have written make sense uh, that's how I'll grade your uh, raw data so to speak and then as far as the rules uh, we'll be looking for one for temperature one for cloud cover and one for, for precipitation to be supported by the data so whatever your data says uh, the rule that you come up with, the weather prediction rule, uh, needs to be supported by your data. Uh, should definitely be supported by your data. So that's how we will grade and evaluate the assignment. So again, remember the overall intent as you work through this. Go outside, get a little bit of fresh air, practice your observation skills. You might pay attention to what the birds are doing, doing as well. This is a great time of year to see uh, birds out and about as they are getting ready to do their breeding and uh, it's just a great time of year for them uh, think about what you are seeing and again enjoy well, that's it for this edition of room 2003 science video as always be well and be safe